Okay, welcome back everyone. We're here live in San Francisco for the Red Hat Summit. This is Silicon Angles, the Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle. I'm joined by my co-host, Stu Miniman, chief analyst at Wikibon.org and cloud and infrastructure. And our next guest is uh, Doug Fisher, VP and GM of Software and Services for Intel. Welcome to the Cube. Thank you. Um, we just had uh, Cisco on earlier talking software. We love DevOps. We've been covering uh, big data, cloud, infrastructure. Got, this is our fifth season with the Cube. Uh, we love going out to the events and talking to people who are in the trenches, with a lot of experience, talking to customers, giving the keynotes, um, because software is so central to all the action right now. It's just, it really is mind blowing how much it's leaking out. Padra was saying yet in her, key, her keynote, you know, it's, it's, it's everyone's a technology company now, which means that the discipline of software, software development, uh, agile, elastic, these are now going to be buzzwords that will be permeating throughout the, the, the business marketplace. That traditionally wasn't necessarily every corner of the world. So I want to get your take. Uh, Red Hat's 10 years for this show, obviously Red Hat's uh, brand is phenomenal in the enterprise, uh, kind of has a, a, fresh, a, a fresh perspective with cloud and a, almost a full portfolio. How is that changing the software world and from your perspective as Intel, an enabler uh, of great things, uh, I mean you guys have been innovating on software at many levels, how does that all come together? Give us the, give us the take on that. Yeah, you know, if I, um if I look back when I first started in software, there was almost um, an unconscious separation uh, between the work you do in software and hardware. Even though there was um, key interactions, the conversations were oftentimes separate. And it's becoming very difficult to have separate conversations with software and hardware. It really is about the system, the elements that combine and the combination between the two. Um, whether it's in the client side all the way to small wearable devices, to handset tablets, all the way up into the enterprise, the conversation needs to be together because the intimacy between the software and taking advantage of the hardware aspects is so critical in exposing um, all the value we're putting into our platforms through things like Red Hat's Enterprise Linux, Enterprise Virtualization, or their uh, OpenStack uh, platform. Any of those type of things, you have to have a, com a combination of both. So, I'm finding more and more I'm participating, uh, as you heard uh, Paul announce uh, my involvement, it's been much more public because they really are tied together. Talk about the evolution of open source for a second, and, and, and then we'll go right into the disruption aspect of where the disruption points are. Um, open source you know, is generational, some will argue we're in the sixth generation, third, fourth, uh, but the maturization of, of, of open source is really at a level that we've never seen before. Obviously, the old expression, standing on the shoulders of others before you, et cetera, et cetera, but it's a whole different ballgame now. Talk about the dynamics of open source today and how that leads into the key disruption areas. Well, you know, uh, as you well know, Intel participates with, uh, we're, we're, we're a platform of choice, port of choice, however you describe it. So was, we were involved in every aspect of software. When it comes to open source, the thing I talk about is the innovation that's occurring. Uh, whether it's in uh, the data center or even in the small uh, form factor devices, you're finding a tremendous amount of innovation occurring in the open source because small companies, whether it's through maker or hackathons or other ways, are starting to participate and innovate around their solution. And open source is a simple way of having the ability to drive innovation into your devices. So I, I see it as um, the rate at which innovation is occurring has accelerated uh, in the open source community from when I first started participating in it. Yeah. Doug, I'm wondering, uh, in your keynote, you spoke a lot about OpenStack. Yep. Um, and so, you know, Intel has a lot of touch points. It seemed like you were in almost every single project. I mean, talking about compute, network, storage, and orchestration. Yep. You know, what, what does Intel see its, its, its role in OpenStack? Red Hat talks about they're the leading contributor. You know, yep. where, 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 where's Intel's seat at the table? Yeah, so at the heart, um, my job is to ensure that all the great advancements we put into our platform, whether it's the Xeon uh, E7s all the way down to even the Atom-based platforms, whatever innovations and capabilities we bring into our platform, that it gets exposed. This is the, this is the, the ability to get that value into these solutions. So I work with the open source community uh, and, and partners like Red Hat to ensure that we get those innovations driven into their solutions so they don't um, the, the, they're not just hidden from that capability. And that's what I talked about in the orchestration layer, is that it has to have the ability to reach in and take advantage of you know, new security capabilities we'll build in, new instructions. So my job is to ensure that happens. 
In addition to that, we see this as a great opportunity to extend the cloud environment uh, in the enterprise. And so we're going to work to ensure that we bring ease, ease of deployment, security, uh, enterprise capabilities. We're going to help participate with the open source community to ensure we bring those aspects to OpenStack as well as ensuring that it runs best on Intel architecture. The combination of those two is really what our role is. And that's why you find us uh, involved in so many different projects is because there's a lot of projects that touch either our platform or that mature the, the overall stack that we care about. Yeah. Um, you know, in many ways, Intel's one of the ones that really kind of led some of the convergence in the data center. If you look, you know, you, you've got pieces across the network, it seems, you know, the entire data center can be a chip. Um, you know, can, can you give us an update on where that stands and, uh, you know, also, you know, what is the role of, you know, open source in, you know, kind of the future of, of, of your product line? Well, I mean, uh, just like the work we do with Microsoft, uh, work in open source is, is critical. We, we realize there's multiple operating environments that are going to be critical to data center, and so we ensure that our solution satisfies all the needs. And open source specifically, um, back to what I said, we, we take what we see uh, happening. We, we have deep expertise in a broad set of the software elements. And so we take that information and knowledge and our involvement in the software community, and we drive that knowledge back into advancements in our architecture. And so the kind of things we do in our platform are not things uh, solely driven by just our desire to put new capabilities in our platform, but they're uh, built on the desire to solve future problems we see or future opportunities we see in, the, in uh, going into the marketplace. And there's no difference in what we see with the early stages of open source software in the operating system to what we see happening in OpenStack. We're going to take what we see, where the direction is going, and bring that capability into our platform. Virtualization is an example I used where we put VT technology into our platform. We used open source to expose that value as quickly as, quickly as we could to bring that to our customers. And so you're going to see us add technologies and capabilities and enhancements to our platform that are driven by the knowledge we have of where the software ecosystem is going. Doug, I want to ask you a question about uh, Linux. Talk about um, how Intel supported Linux in the past and um, what we can draw from that today and, and what's different, what's the same, what's evolving, what's the tweaks, because you guys have a deep experience, obviously, uh, in, uh, in abstracting away complexity, whether it's at the, yeah. at the hardware level, and that's what people want. I mean, they, don't, they don't mind proprietary if it's abstracted away, it's, if it's visible. Mm -hmm. um, but Linux is an open framework. What have you guys done in the past, and how does that compare and contrast to what's happening today, and what can you share? Okay, I'll try to keep this short. We've had <laughs> such a long history here. Um, and at the heart of it, I would, I would say that at the heart of what we do in open source, has not changed. The norms and the expectations and how you work in open source is the same today as it was in the very early stages. We were an early investor in Red Hat, we participated from the very beginning and helped build out uh, the capabilities in open source. Where it's a move today is, is very, um, the, the heart of where it was today is still being used in capabilities that are relevant in these new type of devices. So we've talked a lot about data center today, but if you look at um, with, with the growth in some of the handset space, the wearables, uh, the tablets, the, at the core of that is Linux. And this is why we um, ensure that we invest resources to optimize that stack for our architecture. Because it's the heart of a lot of innovation in these small form factor devices, just as much as it is um, innovation in the data center. But at the heart of it, there's still one kernel, there's still one Linux, and so, and the norms have not changed. So as much as you see um, the game happening. is still the same. The game's still the same. The way you work in open source, it's still based on meritocracy, and it's still based on contributions. And that's the beauty of open source. It really is those two things. So Dave Vellante and I always talk, and Dave's not here, so shout out to Dave Vellante, uh, my co-host Stu's filling in for him uh, this week. He uh, was Ill, he's in, back on the East Coast. We always joke about the, uh, the modern business models of today in open source. I want to be the red hat of blank, red hat of blank. So we even joked, we're the red hat of media. The <laughs> cube is uh, open source yeah. content. So um, it was, we, we don't sell subscriptions, maybe we should. Maybe that's a new business model idea. So Dave, if you're watching, write that down. Um, but you know, there's a post out there from Peter Levine um, uh, on TechCrunch that said, there'll never be a red hat of anything going forward. What's your take on that? Because you know, Red Hat's business model has been very viable. Hortonworks takes that same position. Cloudera takes a little bit different perspective uh, in the Hadoop world. But open source is not going away. There's a lot of verticals, a lot of omni-channel kind of open source products out there. Uh, 
is the Red Hat model old? Is it still around? Can someone be the Red Hat of something? You know, it's funny. You should, there, there is a big debate. I, uh, I'm in a lot of conversations where the, the statements made and the debate ensues. Um, it's not important where the business model ends. I think, um, will you see, uh, my view, will you see open source being used to build value-based solutions and deployed to the industry? And yes, you'll absolutely see that. Whether companies um, going forward will do exactly what Red Hat did, build the exact same model, or be as successful as Red Hat, that's to be seen. What's more important to me is that the norms and how you work in open source remain unchanged. That's the beauty of open source. It drives innovation and it drives the ability to participate. And from an Intel perspective, it allows me to be able to ensure that we get the value out of it that we have in our platforms. And so. Um, the business model, it, it is a debate. I'm not going to tell you uh, who's <laughs> Come on, be take the a next position. Uh, yes, just say yes, it could be a red hat. Red hat's the red hat of red hat. There is opportunity for everybody to participate <laughs> in that business model. It's yet to be seen if somebody's going to be successful, but I can tell you at the heart of it, it's not changing. Let me ask you about social media, and, and we had uh, Padre on earlier talking about uh, you know uh, digitizing interactions. So open source has always been about communication, transparency, and openness. Obviously, that's not changing, but now with social media, everything is high velocity. Someone's little gesture or code push or something that gets, is now amplified. Does that change the game a bit? And what's your, do you have a take on that? Do you have any perspective? Well, I think what you see now is um, in a lot of these areas, the, the agile type of software development is really taking hold. How you develop software and how you push it out is really accelerated. Um, a lot of companies, I won't name them, you all know who they are, use that and they, and they have a constant update capabilities. And so I'd say yeah, absolutely yes. The, the need to be able to innovate quickly, put new capabilities in quickly, and then get them out to your customers quickly is, is absolutely critical, and you have to build the infrastructure to, to support that. And so, as we look at some of the things we're doing in, in our software platforms that we deliver uh, optimizations to, we're ensuring that we build that infrastructure to get our customers, our, our, our OEM's customers, whoever delivers the final solution, get the um, capabilities as quickly as possible. So it is impacting how the rate at which you uh, deliver innovation to customers absolutely has changed. So Doug, when we look at the public cloud, I'm, I'm wonder if you're surprised at what a large lead Amazon has in that space, and do you think that's a sustainable lead? Well, I think that you know, a lot of the talk today was about ensuring infrastructure is optimized and, and, and improved for the cloud providers in addition to having the enterprise have the capability to deploy those. I think there's always going to be a need for both. I don't, I don't know one world versus the Amazon and others are doing a fantastic job of delivering those services to customers. Still capabilities that need to be in the enterprise for all the reasons I talked about. There's, there's elements around you know, uh, compliance or security or whatever your corporation holds as, as a requirement or governments or you know, regulators there's going to be need for that. And I think the challenge is for the enterprise guys is to be able to deliver that type of experience in the enterprise. That certainly the, the, uh, the role model, the showcasing is being done by the cloud providers today. Yeah, so you know, if we look back at the consumerization of IT, Intel was one of the you know, big winners in, in that hall trend. I mean, the Wintel, you know, you know, wins that happen there. Yeah. I, I'm curious what your thought is just on kind of the commoditization of IT that's going on today. If we look at, you know, for example, in the server market, you know, the Taiwanese uh, companies are, are growing quite, uh, quite aggressively, um, and no matter who sells it, whether it is kind of an HP, IBM, or those Taiwanese, you know, Intel is still one of the winners. So I'm, I'm curious if you have a commentary uh, well, on, on that trend. We used to uh, take offense to the way our platform was described, uh, and we don't any longer because it really is a standard building block. I don't see it as a commoditization as much as we're seeing people enter into the market to see tremendous opportunity to participate in the server space, and so we're seeing new entrants come in. That's an opportunity for us to grow the market so where we participate. And so for us, we don't see it as that. We continue to add capabilities I talked about today, whether it's trusted execution technology or other things like ANSI, things that drive performance optimization for these new type of workloads. And so I think you continue to see innovation and value brought into the server. What you're really seeing is people recognizing there's opportunity and real value they can bring, and so we're seeing growth in the uh, enterprise. I don't see it as 
commoditization. Doug, I want to ask you about the ecosystem. Obviously, ecosystems are critical. Intel's no uh, stranger to ecosystems. Yeah. You guys have thrived in the PC generation through the history of the company. Now, cloud ecosystem is, is totally forming. You're seeing the, the public, hybrid, private, essentially the data center infrastructure, all that stuff's mm -hmm. happening. Mm -hmm. The genie's out of the bottle, as they say. So, so how is the ecosystem changing in your mind? You, you got companies like IBM, who was on stage last night, 10 years with Red Hat. You guys have had uh, generations of, of success with Red Hat. Cisco's the first timer putting their toe in the water here, which is a big statement uh, for Cisco. So validation, but what does this mean? I mean, you know, what does the new ecosystem look like? And how does uh, Red Hat and others stay current, relevant, and still rise the tide, if you will. You know, it, it, right now it reminds me a bit of how uh, it was when we went from Unix to Linux, um, and everybody participating in that, and at some point there is some, some harmonization in that space. I see some similar uh, characteristics of what we're seeing in things like OpenStack, as everybody's seeing it as an opportunity to bring that cloud-based environment into their, uh, into their space. And so I see a lot of activity and energy. What it really comes down to for me is, it's a positive move because the investment levels are at the stage and growing that need to happen to mature and deliver that capability. And so I think you're going to continue to see advancements, innovation, and it's going to take time to see how this all settles out. Um, the, a layer above OpenStack um, and other elements are being delivered is going to have to provide a capability where everybody can participate in a common way. So I think it's going to take time to get to that level of maturity. So I think we're at an early stage uh, of where we were with Linux. There's a, there's a lot of jockeying going on, certainly at the past layer, we call it the battleground for the, for the cloud. Um, approaches are different. You have bloated approach and you had a thin approach. Um, I mean, democratization, <laughs> meritocracy you mentioned, um, that's in play. What's your thoughts on that, that, that battleground of the past layer? Well, I think, you know, I think you cannot define every workload the same. So I think you're going to have a, a predominance of, uh, of workloads that you would say would be solved by a, a I don't want to say bloated, but a full enterprise solution. You're always going to have um, players that are going to find areas where you know, a streamlined solution meets the needs of that customer, and so they're going to slim down some capabilities to do that. We see that all the time in open source where we build tools and capabilities to allow that to happen. You're going to see that consistently going on even uh, as things like OpenStack mature, uh, but I think the, the focus is going to be on the main element of OpenStack, maturing it, securing it, make it easy to deploy. That's going to be the main focus, uh, I think, for the next few years. All right, so Doug, final question I have for you. If we think about Intel as a software company, you know, what is, what is the one takeaway you would want people to know about Intel's software strategy? Well, Intel's software strategy hasn't changed for the last 20 years. It's just grown and evolved. Our, our strategy has always been um, to ensure that core elements of the software stack take full advantage of our platform. That's what I've been saying uh, in the previous questions. It's really about looking at the layers of software uh, and ensuring that they take full advantage of what we build. And those layers have changed over time. I mean, uh, look back and uh, I remember the, when Java came out and, and our activities around Java and optimizing that and it's evolved to other runtimes, .NET, Dalvik, other runtimes in the marketplace. And so we'll always follow those trends and ensure that we uh, optimize that. We've you know, moved forward and taken um, investments in things like uh, where we see opportunities in the Internet of Things. Uh, we've acquired a company called Meshri and Epona which allow you to securely connect and provision those 50 billion devices I talked about in 2020 to this data center and, and deliver value between those two in and out of your enterprise. So we are going to continue to invest in software where we feel it helps deliver value in the spaces we want to grow, which is like things like Internet of Things. And of course, we see security is probably the biggest shift we've made. Security is one of our main pillars. We've invested and acquired McAfee, and, and the combination of hardware and software to, to, to together, we feel is going to move Intel into the forefront of delivering secure platforms. So where it matters like that, we'll invest or acquire, uh, and of course our cloud era where we see big data um, being absolutely instrumental, we invested in that to ensure that we accelerate 
uh, the adoption of those capabilities. And again, uh, we have other examples. So it really has to be tied to where we see the industry going and our need to help either grow that market or ensure our values. Uh, I mean, Intel's exposed. a force. Intel's a force. You guys have, you know, the, you guys are a $2 billion software company, you're the biggest software company that no one talks about because you <laughs> happen to have hardware and chips yeah. that go along with it. A lot of software involved in that as well. So you guys have a, an invisible hand in the marketplace. You've always been a bellwether in the tech business. So, um, you know, for the folks out there that don't know that, uh, be surprised not to, but you mentioned Cloudera. That's a big part of the big data ecosystem, certainly within Hadoop. Um, uh, endorsing them with the investments, one thing. Does that, and some people ask, is that alienating others like Hortonworks? Can you comment on the Intel's role? Because you do, you do have a lot of influence in the industry. Are you picking a, a, someone to go to the dance with with Cloudera, or is that just an investment? Obviously, we heard from uh, Mike Olson and Cloudera on his blog post, there's a lot of strategic roadmap going on. Does that alienate others in big data space? You know, it's, it's a great question. I, th I actually think if we didn't have the rich tradition that we do in working in open source and, and the participating in the open source community, you could have it, that situation. But those who know Intel and know how we work in open source, know how we participate, know that this is how we're going to do it in, in, uh, in Hadoop. All the stuff I talked about today, all the stuff we talk about going forward, all the elements that we're driving are all going to be driven upstream so that all uh, Hadoop distributors take advantage of it. And so certainly we're invested in Cloudera. We look at them as, as a uh, ability to drive those capabilities into the market quickly, but there's nothing that we're uh, holding back that we won't do. You're not into. foreclosing uh, something uh, 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 upstream. No, we want, no, that's, that's our nature, that's our uh, DNA. We're going to drive those capabilities upstream because we want everybody to take advantage of our platform architecture. So, yeah. Analytics is big. You need processing power to do analytics. Visualization is hot too, and that's an area we'd love to get spend more time on. Uh, but we're out of time. This is the Cube. We're here with Doug Fisher, uh, VP, General Manager of Software Insurers at Intel. Uh, so you have Force and Software committed to open source as usual. Congratulations. Thanks for coming on the Cube. This is the Cube. We'll be right back with our next guest. <laughs>